We're ready to go. Okay. So in order to solve the problem of the motor spinning the wrong direction, you know, we're not going to mount it over the tire. We did this with the jack gear. So the second problem we had was figuring out how to mount the motor to the frame. If we mounted straight to the frame, we'd have all sorts of clearance issues. So we needed to space it up just a little bit, get it a little bit taller. So we solved that with these two pieces of steel. Now they're L-shaped. So what we did was we cut them up here, then we grinded them down and welded them together and made a spacer. So problem number three was the motor itself. We got all the little extracurricular metal out of the way and we mounted the sprocket to it. Now since there's no such thing as a kit for one of these to bolt a chainsaw to a go-kart, and there probably was once upon a time, but I can't find one now. And in the old days, they used steel motors, which made it a whole lot easier to bolt it together. If you had a steel case, you could just run bolts to the case and you're done and done. With plastic cases, it's not so easy. Now I need the case because I need the pull starter. And so what I did was if you look through here, you can see right here, you can see a bolt. I got a bolt here and a bolt at the other end. And I put epoxy in between this and the motor case. And then I ran these two bolts through the case. And, you know, I took the case apart and put the bolts on. Long, long, boring thing. But now she's bolted on. And we've got the sprocket welded on, so we're just about ready to go. So the next thing we've got in line is getting it attached to the go-kart. So let's go do that now. I spent a couple hours staring at this and trying to figure out a way to attach this motor without welding it to this bracket. And of course, being a plastic motor, I'm not going to weld it real successfully anyway. And after staring at it long enough, I came up with this. Bolting the motor to the steel bracket. And we're going to take this, we're going to get the chain on, we're going to line it up. And then we're going to weld the steel bracket to the bolts. Now that accomplishes two things. It holds the motor down well, and it allows us to loosen the bolts underneath and move the motor frontwards and backwards as necessary to adjust the chains and whatnot. because chains will come loose. Now this one's got a lifespan of a housefly. Once we've played with it a little bit, we're done, and we're gonna tear it back down and put the Predator motor back on, which is part of the reason I didn't wanna to weld to any of this. And I needed a way to weld this down, or bolt it down, so it could be removable. So these bolts I went and got just for this. I'm gonna put the original bolts back on when we go back to the other motor. Okay, check on our clearances. Okay, we look good all the way around. We've got our chain at a reasonable tightness. So let's hit it and see what we've got. With one spot. Oop. Nobody will ever accuse me of being a master welder. Okay, let's give this one a little bit more. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Let's take a look at this side in our little spots. Yep, they're holding still, but it's not nearly enough to call it good. That ought to hold it. Okay, I wouldn't call that beautiful. But she's not going anywhere, and that's all I care about. Now we're going to do one of the more comical things to this one. 
in order to put gas in it, you have to tilt the whole thing over because the gas is up against the gas cap. And that's just funny. I suppose when I put gas in a weed eater, I hold it at a certain angle. When I put gas in a chainsaw, you turn it on its side. So we'll turn it on its side and put gas in it.
Now I used the GoPro for filming all those runs because I was using the camera to keep track of the speed. And when I looked, the camera showed a top speed of 34 miles an hour. Now I did the math on that, and that means that little, that little chainsaw motor was turning almost 13,000 RPM before it met its untimely end. I got about four or five runs down the street, and I just showed you a couple of highlights from them. But on the very last run, we ended up dragging it back because the motor just didn't survive. But it was really fun. So will a chainsaw move a go-kart? Yes, it will. Will the clutch overheat and make it hard to move? Yes, it will. Does it accelerate? Yeah, it accelerates like a three-story office building. It barely accelerates at all, but the top end is way up there. That little chainsaw has actually gone faster than that Predator motor has. Predator motor I've had up to a top speed of about 31 or 32, and a little chainsaw motor I had up to 34. Now, it was the end of the chainsaw motor when I did it, but it was worth it. So, now we're back to the Predator motor. We don't have any more chainsaw motor to play with, but it was really fun. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. There's more coming.